Hello everyone. Another week, another tutorial. Apologies for the delay in this video, I had a lot going on. Today, we'll be covering aiming, creating a reticle or crosshair, implementing hit registration for the enemy from the player, and delving into inverse kinematics. Debugging. Let's start by debugging and improving our previous code. Feel free to revisit our last tutorial for better continuity. In the previous code, the character could only roll when she is running. However, we want the character to be able to roll in the direction she is facing, regardless of whether she is running or not. To fix this, let's first navigate to where we handle the animations. Under the else condition, add if not roll. Now, let's create a new function called roll state. Within this function, check if the player has pressed the roll key and is in the base or run state. If true, set roll to true, play the roll animation, set the state to roll, and, as always, disable the upper collision of the character. Now, delete the initial line of code that used to handle this and call the roll state function under the physics process function. Now we create a condition under the physics process function that moves the character in the direction she is facing if the move keys are not pressed. This adjustment ensures that the character can roll in the direction she faces, irrespective of her running state. Let's proceed to the next segment of our tutorial. Character Setup In the character setup process, I established a Raycast 3D named Aim Ray under the camera. I positioned it slightly forward. A scene was added to the Aim Ray node, containing a simple CSG mesh scaled down to represent an arrow. You have the flexibility to change this to a projectile of your choice. The scene is animated to simulate a shot, beginning with keying its initial position and visibility, followed by keying its final position, turning, and keying the visibility off. Next, a new 3D node was created as a child of the neck and named Spine Target. This node is positioned above the character and serves as a target for the new Skeleton IK node we created for the skeleton. In the inspector for Skeleton IK, the spine bone was selected for the root bone and the upper chest bone was selected for the tip bone. Once this setup was complete, the target, spine, target, was chosen in the Skeleton IK Inspector. Additionally, a new 2D control node was created. The crosshair texture was dragged onto the interface and set to the desired size. It's important to note the X and Y axes of the image for later use in the code. With these steps, the character setup phase was concluded aim state, and camera motion. Now for the script, we start by creating variables for the new nodes we've added. Aim Ray, Skeleton, IK 3D, General Skeleton, and Anime Timer. The Anime Timer is the animation node responsible for handling the animation of the arrow shot. Additionally, we create a dictionary named Combat State. My plan is to give my character different combat states based on her situation. You can ignore this by making the keys and values of the dictionary's normal variables if you want. Inside my dictionary, for the arrow combat, I set the aim state to false and fire state to false as well. I create a new variable called target and set it to false. Afterward, I create a new function called aim type. In this function, I check if the player is pressing the aim button and is not rolling, climbing, or crouching. If this condition is met, I rotate the character to face the direction of the camera, set target to true, and the state to aim. We then check if the player just released the fire button, target is true, and roll is also false. If that is the case, we check if the player is not already firing an arrow. Then, we play the animation that shoots the arrow, along with the character animation, and set fire to true. We then check if the player has let go of the aim button and set target to false and the state to the base, state. Remember that the states are being sent to the camera for camera motion. 
So, if we head to the camera code, we export a new variable called the aim position. Move the camera to the position we like for the aim, copy and paste it for the aim position variable. And then copy the default position back to the camera's position to set it back to default. Now just add the condition for the aim so that the camera moves when it's in the aim state. Crosshair. In the process of enhancing our user interface, we introduce a new script for the UI node. Within this script, we define a variable for the imported crosshair texture and export a node named camera. Upon navigating to the editor and selecting the UI, we observe the camera being displayed under the node's inspector. By clicking on it, we can choose the camera node. Returning to the UI script, we establish a new function named Crosshair Placement. Within this function, we initially turn off the crosshair visibility. We proceed to set the crosshair's y-axis position by dividing the viewport's y-axis by 2 and subtracting the crosshair's y-scale. The same calculation is applied to the x-axis. This function is then called under the Ready function. In the process function, we invoke the crosshair placement function and introduce a condition. This condition checks whether the character state obtained from the camera is in the aim state. If true, the crosshair visibility is set to true. Otherwise, it is set to false. Enemy hit detection and arrow hit. To enable the arrow to interact with the environment, we'll implement collision detection for both the wall and enemy entities. Let's start by creating a new function in our player script called spawn arrow. This function takes two arguments, the position where the arrow will collide and the body it will attach to. Inside the spawn arrow function, initialize a variable new arrow and load the arrow scene using the preload function. Make the arrow a child of the specified body, the parent body, set its position to the collision point, and rotate it to align with the character model. Now, within the aim type function, navigate to the conditions related to firing the arrow. Add a new condition to check if the aim ray is colliding. If true, create variables to store the collision point and the colliding body. Call the spawn arrow function with these variables as arguments. Additionally, check if the colliding body is in the enemy group. If it is, trigger the death animation for the enemy. This enhances the gameplay by providing a visual representation of the arrow hitting and defeating enemies. Inverse Kinematics to achieve a dynamic bending effect with mouse motion, utilize inverse kinematics, IK. In the character setup, the spine target was established as a child of the neck node, responsible for rotating the camera along the x-axis. Enabling IK is a straightforward process. Within the aim type function, add the line skeleton ik 3 start This activates inverse kinematics causing the spine and chest bones to rotate along the x-axis, resulting in a bent character. To deactivate IK, introduce a condition that checks if the character is not in the aim state. If true, use skeleton ik 30 dot stop to halt the character from looking up and down. Additionally, reset the skeleton to its default pose. Stay tuned for the next video where we'll delve into the combat system. Feel free to drop comments and likes. See you next week.